There's a lot of buzz in the media regarding saturated and unsaturated fats, and so today on Applied Science I'd like to uh, give you some of the details behind those terms, and then also show you a demonstration of how to saturate a fat with hydrogen gas. Fatty acids are the basic building blocks that make up all of the fats and oils you will encounter in cooking, and they come in two basic varieties, the saturated and the unsaturated. And so what we mean by saying saturated is actually saturated with hydrogen. So the, the fatty acid molecule is basically a chain of carbon atoms with something on the end. And in the saturated case, we've put a hydrogen atom in every possible position. So there's no way that we can add more hydrogen to this. However, in the unsaturated case, one of the bonds between the carbon atoms is double. And we've removed, or there, there is no hydrogen here, it's only one hydrogen atom. Uh, coming off when there could be two here if we removed this double bond, so it's unsaturated. For clarity, it's common not to draw the C's and H's in the molecular diagram. So down here I have the same molecule uh, just without the C's and H's drawn. And in the unsaturated case, the double bond is shown by this double line here. To give an example of an unsaturated fat, I have a test tube here with some olive oil in it. And I should note that the olive oil is actually made up of both saturated and unsaturated fats. It's just the ratio between the two that determine uh, the physical properties of the fat or the oil. So in this case, the oil is nice and liquidy at room temperature. And on this side, I have the same olive oil that I have hydrogenated. I've actually saturated it by this process that I'm going to talk about. And as you can see, it's actually solid at room temperature. It's a white solid. Interestingly, it's actually the shape of the molecule that determines the melting point. So as we can see in the unsaturated case, the molecule has a kink in it because of this uh, double bond here, whereas the saturated one is straight. So at first, this seems a little counterintuitive if you think of which molecule is more likely to get tangled up with each other and create a solid. You might think it's the, the curvy one, the kinked one. But actually, if you think about like a pile of tree branches, uh, it's generally not very dense because the branches are very gnarly and twisted and they sort of hold each other apart. Whereas if you think of a stack of flat boards, the boards are able to compress together very closely and create a denser sort of solid. And that's the same case with these molecules. These straight uh, fatty acids are able to get closer to each other and this is more conducive to creating a solid at a given temperature. When it comes to the health implications of these oils, just imagine which one of these you'd rather have injected into your arteries. The solid that's going to form clumps and block off your blood flow, or the liquid that's just going to slide along and not cause as much trouble. Of course, it's not quite that simple, but in some ways it actually is. So why do we even bother with saturated fats in cooking? Why not just use unsaturated oils all the time? Uh, unfortunately for us, it turns out that we've developed quite a keen sense of taste for saturated fats, probably because they indicated uh, meats and high calorie uh, content meals. So back in the caveman days, the uh, humans that were able to get higher calorie meals were more successful and uh, you know, so it goes. Before we get started with the process of adding more hydrogen, I wanted to cover a few more buzzwords that are surrounding unsaturated fats. A monounsaturated fat just has one carbon double bond in it, and so uh, there's only one spot that we could add more hydrogen. A polyunsaturated fatty acid has two or more spots, and then the buzzword of them all, omega-3 and like omega-6 fatty acids, all this is doing is telling you where on the chain this double bond is occurring. So an omega-3 means that from the omega side of the chain, which is the end of the chain, if you count in three carbon atoms, that's where the double bond occurs. So the alpha is the, you know, the head of this molecule and the omega is the tail, that's all. In our quest to make better and better tasting food, we figured out we could take an already pretty good tasting oil and add hydrogen gas to it to create an even more desirable saturated fat. So what I'm going to do today is saturate a little bit of olive oil just to show you the process. And since this is not going to be a uh, quantitative analysis, I'm just going to measure stuff out kind of by eye. To the olive oil, I'm going to be adding hexane, and the hexane is going to serve as a solvent. Since we're going to be creating um, a hydrogenated oil or a solid oil in here, we need to have a solvent to prevent this from basically forming solid chunks and making the reaction slow down. So the hexane just serves as a, a carrier to keep everything liquid. 
In order to make this reaction happen at room temperature and low pressures, we're going to use a catalyst. So I have this palladium on carbon, and it says 10%. So 10% of this by weight is palladium metal. Uh, we can't just take a chunk of palladium and put it in there because the surface area would be very low and it would be very expensive. So what we do is we coat these tiny bits of carbon. It's basically that carbon dust in there that's been coated with palladium metal so that when we mix this in, the palladium will be very evenly, um, intimately mixed with the liquid. Okay, I'll drop in the stir bar and I'm not going to use the heat on the hot plate. This is just going to be stirring today. And we'll add a cork and this funny contraption. I didn't have a balloon to put on the top, so I'm just going to use a glove. I'm going to switch on the vacuum pump and then open the blue valve here to pull all the air out of the chamber. Then I'm going to close that valve and open the hydrogen valve so that we fill the thing up with hydrogen and you'll see the glove inflate. And I'm going to do that about three or four times to try to get all the air out of the flask and fill it completely with hydrogen. Okay, so this last time I filled with hydrogen, and you can see the glove is inflated, so there's a very low amount of pressure in, of hydrogen gas in there. And I'm just going to leave it stirring unheated for about one to two hours. As you can see, the palladium has assisted the fatty acids in absorbing the hydrogen gas that we pumped in. And you can even see that the solid form, the hydrogenated, saturated form of the fatty acids are coating the inside of the flask here. So now the job is to uh, filter out the catalyst as well as possible and uh, see what kind of product we have. Uh, but now we want to get rid of the hexane, so now all we have to do is boil it away. The oil has a much, much higher boiling point than hexane, so we have a wide window where we can heat it up and just let all the hexane boil away. The temperature is 150 degrees C, so we can be sure that any hexane has been boiled away by now, and the boiling has visibly stopped. So what we're left with is the uh, hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated olive oil. And of course it's liquid now because the temperature is quite high, it's 150 degrees C. So we'll let this cool down to room temperature. So here's our finished product. It's basically a spreadable sort of olive oil. It's quite thick and heavy. It's um, about the consistency of butter, I'd say, at room temperature. And it smells quite a bit like olive oil. It's, the color is actually from uh, the remaining catalyst carbon that I couldn't filter out. Otherwise, it would basically just be whitish or even slightly yellow from the original olive oil color. So aren't we clever in sort of cheating nature into giving us fattier fats, as it were? But unfortunately, there's another problem. When we do this hydrogenation process, some of the fatty acids will not be fully saturated. Some will just be partially saturated. And when we do this hydrogenation process, there's one or two configurations that can happen. When we're adding hydrogen, we might add hydrogen such that they're on opposite sides of the chain, like this, or they might be on the same side of the chain, like this. When they're opposite, this is called a trans fatty acid and it makes the chain kind of straight again. There's actually a slight kink. It, it's sort of like a step over, but it's mostly straight. Whereas if the hydrogens are on the same side, we get this kink and all the health benefits that we talked about of having a higher melting point oil apply. So recently trans fatty acids have been in the news quite a bit. Because hydrogenation is such a popular process, a lot of the uh, food in the supermarket has trans fatty acids in it because it's gone through this hydrogenation process. And as you can see, because of the straight molecule, it's again, unhealthful. When the hydrogens are on the same side of the uh, molecule, that configuration is called cis. And there is a way to control the ratio of the cis versus trans fatty acids when we do a hydrogenation process. However, they're not easy, and not easy translates to cost money. And so um, food manufacturers have been reluctant to do this until there was so much uh, health data that supported uh, not putting trans fatty uh, acids in our foods unless we really have to. Okay, see you next time. Bye.